Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the next month's update and uh, honestly there's not a lot going on especially because side event is effectively a rehash of Squirrel Girls event with the Squirrel store and uh, other than that there's pretty much nothing outside of a new fighting mechanic that we're going to see and uh, that is the one thing that kind of intrigues me. Uh, but uh, with that also, I'm not going to make a separate videos for updates, side event quests and all that kind of stuff. And the full champion ability breakdowns haven't yet officially dropped for the community. So I'm going to wait for that before we discuss the two new champions that are going to get added next month, which are, of course, Immortal Abomination and Immortal Hulk. Immortal Hulk is going to be the one that comes first, I believe. And uh, that means, yeah, next, uh, well... Thursday, Immortal Hulk is coming. Um, but other than that, uh, our monthly side event quest is the Gamma one. Basically, instead of uh, acorns, we're going to be collecting Gamma Radiation. We're going to have a store, which I'm going to get to in a second. One second. No, not that one. This one. Here we go. So basically, we're going to earn this Gamma Radiation by doing a daily kind of quest. It will have nine fights. Uh, plus boss, so 10 fights, uh, we're going to receive an entry in that quest once a day. We can accumulate that uh, for as many days as we want, and then we can knock out as many of these quests uh, as we like in the same day, as, as many gauntlets as we have. And uh, it does seem, though, that it's going to be quite time-consuming because there are 10 fights, and 10 fights by default do take quite a while, even if they are re relatively easy by the skill level. So I'm not sure how big of a fan I will be with that. But uh, in all other aspects, there is literally nothing new and nothing too kind of exciting, I would say. And the side event quest, the rewards overall are not quite as good as Mutant Treasure Island. Uh, so they're not exactly bad either, but they're just relatively something you'd kind of expect. And uh, yeah, so you're going to have a choice in this case, because Squirrel Girl Store, you kind of could buy everything that was in there. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be the case this time, because I haven't done the math. But uh, either way, you're going to be able to pick up the items that are most important to you first. So that's always kind of like an upside. And uh, simultaneously with the store, there's going to be a solo event. And the more of this Gamma radiation radiation that you spend the better rewards you get there is a five star awakening gem that by the looks of it seems to be a generic one so that will definitely be useful but uh other than that uh you have the six star shots five star shots tier 12 tier 4 basics a legendary crystal in there and that's about that so it's a very uh seen already i went uh, now we have the root mechanic, and uh, what a root mechanic basically does, it glues a champion in a spot. So you will be able to perform every single action that you were previously, but you will not be able to move from right to left. So presumably you will not be able to intercept, let's say. But uh, other than that, I believe, you can still trigger dexterity to evade opponent's attacks, so on and so forth. Uh, obviously, I haven't fully yet seen or experienced how this mechanic is going to be, but uh, it does seem quite interesting. I'm open and looking forward to trying and testing it out. And uh, yeah, in case you do have some sort of kind of like trouble uh, understanding exactly what's going to happen, well then imagine that you're just basically uh, playing Spider-Man who has stepped in a puddle of glue and he's stuck there. He can still fight, he can still punch and everything else, but he cannot move out of that one spot, more or less, right? And uh, then there are also changes to Cavalier difficulty, which I do command Kabam for, because uh, the changes that I have seen so far, I do like. Uh, the main things that will be changed uh, is going to be that the class-specific buffs that we have in each quest uh, are going to be basically kind of like buffed up. So when it comes to tech champions, now you will gain a fury buff whenever you power drain, lock or burn the opponent. 
previously i think it was only power drain and also only if you take them below a bar of power but now every time you power drain the opponent you will gain that fury and in addition to that if you have an armor buff every time you parry you will power drain the opponent so basically perform 10 parries and you have 10 furies kind of thing Mystic Consumption uh, gets changed up a bit as well. Scientific Exploit. Uh, science attackers have a 20% chance per weakness. Ex exhaustion or Fatigue debuff on the opponent to inflict a vulnerability debuff. So it's going to let you hit harder there as well. And the biggest change, I think, because this was kind of like by far the most useless uh, global node is to the mutant champions. Because now every champion is going to have that Omega Red a level of immunity against bleed and that coupled with biohazard will effectively let you heal throughout the quest plus you obviously can benefit from the prowess debuff so mutant attackers now reduce the potency of bleed debuffs by 90 percent and any relatively highly ranked mutant champion should be able to net heal from that if you combine by willpower or if you have coagulate active you should go up to 100 percent bleed uh, resistance and you shouldn't be taking any damage really so that will now mean that you can use any bleed immune champions plus any mutants, which is perfect. Which is what you couldn't do before, because previously that 50% reduction just wasn't enough. If you brought in a mutant champion that got the 50% bleed reduction, you still just bled to death. Just slightly slower than you otherwise would. Uh, so yeah, this is a quite big change I do like about that and uh, we need to give Kabam props for recognizing some issues with that. Same as with the skill nodes, uh, they are replacing the Polkada power to Rapid Metabolism 1, which uh, was extremely annoying because unless you had the damage or time debuff on opponent, you couldn't gain any power with any champion basically there, so it was like heavily restrictive. And uh, now you will gain Fury buffs with skilled champions anytime any damaging debuff is purified or expires an opponent. With Rapid Metabolism 1, they will obviously expire quicker, but you will get a lot of Furies quicker. So that should overall be a quite good time. And there is absolutely nothing wrong, in my opinion, with Cosmic Grit. But uh, now they're reducing threshold of you gaining those aptitudes from basically fourth buff to the third buff. So you're going to be able to start dealing damage quicker, which is also a decently good uh, swap there. So I do like that. I do think that uh, we also need to see a lot more variety of nodes in these quests. Because I personally kind of already got bored from knowing that entire quest is going to be distract or knowing that entire quest is going to be buffed up and uh, things like that so i would like to see those nodes to be consistently rotated and changed because otherwise it just feels mundane and uh boring like first of all you know when difficulty quest seemed fun and interesting because it was new but second one already didn't quite feel as exciting just because literally every single global node was exactly the same i hope they changed them up this time to a degree at least but well this time at least we're gonna have changes in the global class buffs that we have in the quest and another change is that they are uh, making the bosses easier if you run the easy path so what they're doing is basically they added a 100% health linked node at the end of the easy path and that means when you take that path, you have a chance to take out that 100% health node and upon your opponent, well, the boss of the quest will have less health if you have done that one single path. Otherwise, they're going to have the same level of health that they previously did. And another note, I wished they would slightly reduce the health pools in quality and difficulty because I think one of the bigger issues about quality and difficulty, at least for me personally, is uh, the reward for effort ratio and if they do not want to increase the rewards uh, they could at least try and re reduce the time investment needed and the large health pools is the primary reason why it does take so long even with like relatively well ranked up rosters and uh, yeah unfortunately we're not seeing that yet hopefully that change is made or perhaps kabam find some other way to make that difficulty look uh, more exciting 
because for something so hyped that was in works for such a long time, in my opinion, it is really undelivering. Like, it's just not quite interesting enough. It should be a bigger deal than it feels already. And we only have had two of these. So, hopefully they can fix some of those things, uh, either by adding rewards or speeding up the process. To a degree, these updated uh, class-specific buffs should be helpful to speed it up a bit, because you have either more damage or quicker ramp up on the damage that you can access from these global buffs. So hopefully that helps. But uh, all in all, uh, we're just going to have to go through and see it. But for me personally, I don't know. I just don't really look forward to doing another 10 hour Kavala difficulty quest or something like that or close to 10 hours anyways. And uh, yeah, so side event changed Kavala difficulty and Besides that, there will be a new feature that's going to be Alliance Alert, where you can quote unquote ping and poke summoners when it's their turn to move in Alliance Quest or an Alliance War. But they do have to be online in the game, I believe. Uh, introducing Alliance Alert. Summoners will now be able to poke fellow Alliance members in both Alliance Quest and Wars to alert them that they're free to move. Poked Summoner will receive a notification if they're in-game, and device, device notification if their app is closed out, oh, so that's actually quite decent. So that should definitely uh, be a useful feature, especially because, I don't know, for me personally, I have all my notifications disabled on lineup, because otherwise it just sparks and pings all the time. And uh, in general, yeah, it could work out really well. And uh, I do like that update. Obviously, we have the Falcon and Gambit buff going live. Uh, there is an Apocalypse bug fix uh, with his uh, level 2. And there is, a, more importantly, Magneto's house effects fixed an issue where the pre-fight ability would cause parry to fail. So if they have fixed an issue with uh, Magneto's pre-fight I think then that is finally the time when I can objectively evaluate the champion because quite honestly so far every single experience that I have had using Magneto or using his pre-fight I just had a very negative bad experience because for the most part it was hindering me in the fights and I was getting hit in the face when I didn't expect to get hit in the face because parry didn't register some champions got pushed back and some other interactions were weird so yeah Hopefully he's finally now, several months later, working fine and I can actually release kind of like a review breakdown video about the guy, how to use him and uh, hopefully he can pick up some steam in the community because he has been completely overshadowed by Red Magneto's counterpart. But yeah, I think that is pretty much it. Uh, relatively surprisingly, to be honest, quiet by the looks of it, month no new big event content released uh, hopefully we see something in december because it has been really really long time since kabam has released any kind of like well i'm gonna use the word challenging content because i know that i'm not in the same boat as uh, many other people are but uh in the same time most of my alliance mates and many people whom i talk to have revives constantly expiring and uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of new big things to do. We haven't seen, obviously, Act 7 that's getting reworked. Uh, Abyss came out like 10 months ago. There hasn't been anything other big to come out. That Summer of Pain that we got promised never arrived. And now it's already coming to winter time. It's definitely autumn. So yeah, I hope there is something big hitting the game soon, because otherwise it does start to feel quite a bit stale now. The champion reworks and things like that obviously help, but ultimately we are lacking hard, hard serious content, at least from my personal perspective. That is what I think I would like to see. Uh, but yeah, uh, that will do for today. If you like today's video, hit that like button, hit that sub button. We are currently on the mission to get 30,000 subscribers. Uh, so if you can help out in any way, that would be greatly appreciated. But yeah, that is me done and I'm going to catch you guys soon. See ya.